Hello everyone and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fan Spooktacular Toy Reviews. When it comes to the original Jurassic Trilogy, Jurassic Park 3 was always a bit of a mixed bag for me. I certainly don't hate it as much as most general audiences and critics do, but I do have plenty of issues with it. <laughs> that being said, it's not without its strong moments, and perhaps one of my favorite set pieces takes place in the abandoned engine facility. There was something so eerie to me about watching the cast make their way through this husk of a fallen enterprise, stepping across broken eggshells and past vats of long-forgotten dinosaur embryos left to float in amniotic fluid. It probably helps that I have a certain fascination with oddities, so much so that whenever something comes along that sort of marries the idea of dinosaurs and the macabre, I'll always go out of my way to track it down. Rebor's dissected copy specimen and trio of skulls were four incredibly distinct additions to their lineup and my collection, and after taking a look at those last year, I figured it was only fitting to include some more of their oddities in this year's spectacular toy reviews. Between now and then, I managed to get my hands on their Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus fetus wet specimens, and knew both would make great additions to the series. So here we go, it's Killer Shrew Fan Spooktacular Toy Reviews, and these are Rebor's Wet Specimen Oddities. We'll start by taking a look at the Velociraptor fetus. In terms of the overall forms and features, it's pretty distinct as a Jurassic Park style Velociraptor, sporting the traditional boxy head and pronated hands. Obviously, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. The head and features like the eye have been enlarged, while features like the infamous sickle claw have been shrunk down to give it the appearance of a still developing infant. Right away, I will say that I am quite fond of the overall proportions and and shape of this baby. The bent head, curled tail, and folded limbs puts me in mind of baby Louie and helps to sell the look of a developing embryo that's been preserved for a collection. As far as the fine details go, you can see that the head has been covered in subtle, round, and non-overlapping scales which gives way to folds of leathery, wrinkled skin that stretch across the bulging cords of straining muscle beneath the skin, flexing with the downward curve of the neck. Once you hit the midsection, you'll note the forms of the shoulder blade and rib cage, again all covered in wrinkled skin texture. The wrinkles and striations continue all the way down to the tip of the curled tail, again stretched tighter over the height of the bell curve and bunching up more towards the tip. The limbs are quite spindly, but not without some subtle muscle tones peeking through the forearms as we lead down into the proportionally large hands. Meanwhile, the thighs and calves also sport some muscle tones beneath the skin details, and you can see the distinct pubic boot jutting out just between the thighs there. All the claws have been picked out in a dull gray, and then the fingers and toes bear the usual plate scaling up the backs of the digits. On a more cosmetic note, the seams around the limbs are a bit more apparent than what I'd typically like to see, but on a more simplistic sculpt like this, I can understand why they would be harder to disguise. And that's the sculpt of the Velociraptor fetus. Pretty simple and straightforward, but it does what it needs to do to convey the idea of a Jurassic Park style dinosaur embryo, and succeeds at putting me in mind of the hatching raptor from the original lab scene. Now, moving on to the Tyrannosaurus Rex, I will admit to a major blunder on my part. I somehow managed to put the lid on wrong and have essentially wedged the jar shut. Try as I might to pry or pop the lid off, it just will not come loose. I've considered actually breaking the jar to get the fetus out again, but until I have a replacement jar in hand that fits the base of the figure, this is how it is going to stay. Unfortunately, that means we will have to take a more distant look at this dinosaur, but hopefully this can serve as a warning to anyone out there considering these figures to always be mindful of how you're putting the lids on these jars. 
Anyway, taking as close a look as we can, you'll note that this figure is once again an apparent JP-style infant Rex. The arched brows above the closed eyes are a dead giveaway, and the belly even bears a more simplified take on the classic armor look of the Stan Winston skull. But getting back to the head, you'll see it's once again covered in scales, and you've even got some little baby teeth poking out of the upper jaw there. When comparing the two fetuses side by side, the scale work on the head of the Rex feels a lot more apparent. In fact, the entire sculpt of this figure feels a bit more heavy-handed, with all the folds of skin being adorned in non-overlapping rounded scales. This puts the figure more in line with Rebor's Killer Queen sculpts, for better or for worse. It's certainly detailed, as you can see, but it does feel like a repetitive texture stamp that obfuscates all the movement of the flesh and skin you'd expect to see in this curled-up position. That, and I do find myself wondering how how quote-unquote developed the scales would be on a still-growing embryo. The pruny skin of the Velociraptor just feels more believable in my eyes. I will say, whereas the Raptor has the more emaciated, alien-like proportions, this figure comes across more as the burly baby of the two, with a nice wide belly and hips, as well as some rotund-looking legs and cankles. Meanwhile, the arms are the usual elongated JP arms, and it does look like they have their own fair share of fat sagging down over the shoulder and bicep. Once again, these seams are apparent at a glance, but these scales do help disguise them a little more here, so I guess that's something to be said about the overstated scale detail. Just like the Velociraptor, the Rex features the usual plate scales along the toes and fingers, as well as gray paint on the nails. In fact, in regards to the overall paint jobs, both are very similar in colors with a desaturated flesh tone and gray eyelids. The Raptor might have a bit more pink in there, but both have the look of a long-preserved specimen now devoid of pigment. As far as the included additions go, both the canisters are the same, except in regards to their overall size, with the Rex obviously having a bigger one to accommodate a larger specimen. Setting up the display is a simple matter of filling the jars about three quarters of the way full, then lowering your dinosaurs in, and Bob's your uncle, you have something right out of JP3. This is how you make dinosaurs? No, this is how you play God. I will say it might seem a given, but I do appreciate how perfectly sized for these containers the figures feel. It does give the illusion that they're pressed and unfurled against the glass. It's a small detail, but think how much less presence that would have if they left it to float in an oversized jug. The fact that they were designed with the jar size in mind really helps sell the display. Each then comes with its own light-up base, perfectly sized to the jar in question. There's not much to say about these, no design or anything to them. They're just black discs with an on-off switch that lets you add a little dramatic lighting to the figures. And boy, does that make for a cool look or what? Moving on to measurements. On the base, the total height of the Raptor display comes up to just under 7 inches off the ground or around 18 centimeters, while off the base it comes up to around 6.5 inches or roughly 16 centimeters. Meanwhile, the base measures about 2.75 inches or 7 centimeters across, and the dinosaur itself is about 3.5 inches or 9 centimeters. Meanwhile, the Rex display comes in at just under 8.5 inches or around 21.5 centimeters off the ground when on the base and around 7 and 3 quarters inches off the ground or just under 20 centimeters when on the base. The base itself is about 3.5 inches or roughly 9 centimeters at its widest point. And unfortunately, I can't give you an exact measurement on the Rex itself. Like I said, it's stuck inside the jar and the water probably makes it look bigger than it is. So we just have to take the L on that one. For size comparisons, I really wasn't sure what to compare these two. They seem to exist as their own unique thing, but I eventually decided why not bring in some adult figures of the animals in question. To that end, we have the ever-popular Papo Tyrannosaurus Rex and Velociraptor next to their corresponding fetus, and hopefully this comparison can give you a good idea of the size to expect from these two Rebor Oddity offerings. Thank you. 
So there you have it everyone, that is going to do it for my look at Rebors, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and Velociraptor Fetus Wet Specimen Oddities. I really do love the overall presentation of these two, and the eerie vibe they give off. If, like me, you're a fan of the bizarre, want a touch of something truly unique in your collection, or just love that scene in Jurassic Park 3 where our heroes walk past the vats of abandoned dinosaur embryos, then these two will make great additions to your shelves. That being said, if you could only get one, I would recommend the Velociraptor over the T-Rex. The more subtle presentation gives it a much more believable look in my opinion. Plus, the smaller frame and bulbous head really adds to the creep factor. But I am glad to have both at the end of the day. As always though, I want to know what you guys think of these figures. Do you own them yet? Are you planning on picking them up? Which is your favorite and why? And would you like to see Rebor do more of these fetus specimens down the line? I know I would. Be sure to leave a comment down below and as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again on Halloween for one final spooktacular review.